Good afternoon, everybody. So if you're following along in the note packet, I've got step by step how you go about finding the result of a vector if you're going to add them up. And those steps are right here. But you can read that on the handout. So let's go straight on into an example. So here I see a system of vectors. I have this 18 Newton vector and this 43 Newton vector, and I want to add them up. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the parts. Now remember the formula from the last video. The x component is the magnitude times the cosine of the angle. The y component is the magnitude times the sine of the angle. So first I'm going to take on this vector right here. That is 18 Newtons is the size times the cosine of 79 degrees is the angle. And then to get the y component, 18 Newtons times the sine of 79 degrees. So matching up the parts, the radius is the magnitude, 18 Newtons. The angle is 79 degrees. And now I'm running to my calculator. Got my calculator fired up here. Check in the mode. I want to make sure I'm in degrees. Look at that. I was in radians. So I need to switch over to degrees. And now typing in very quickly, 18 cosine 79 and 18 sine 79 gives me, for this 18 Newton vector, my components are 3.435 and 17.669. Now, Mr. Nunn, this problem only has two significant figures. That's true, but I always leave rounding for the final step. So I'm writing a few extra digits here, and I'll do my rounding later. Now we need to do the same thing with the other vector. So now we take a look at this vector. Magnitude is 43 newtons times the cosine of, oh, no, wait a minute, that's not 25 degrees. Remember, that's not where angles are measured from. Angles are measured from here. So that's 180 degrees and 25 more, which is 205 degrees, 205 degrees. So 43 newtons times the cosine of 205 degrees is going to give me the x component, 43 newtons times the sine of 205 degrees is going to give me the y component. And so again, here I go to my calculator, 43 cosine 205 and 43 sine 205 gives me, for this 43 newton vector, I have negative 38.971 and negative 18.173. So I want to find my overall result. All I got to do now is add these two guys together. And of course, I'm not going to do that by hand. That's what calculators are for. So adding up the x's, I have 3.435 plus negative 38.9. 7, 1 gives me, oops, hit the wrong button there, gives me negative 35.536. And for the y component, 17.669 plus negative 18.173 gives me negative 0.504. Now it's time to round. I have two significant figures in my problem. So 35.536 is going to round to negative 36. And negative 0.504 is going to round to negative 0.50. So if I wanted to draw my result, my result is going 36 to the left and 0.5 down way off to the left and just a little bit down there in blue that's more or less where my overall result is
Now what else do I need to do? I need to find the magnitude of that vector and I want to find the direction angle of that vector. First magnitude. Remember that's just the Pythagorean theorem. Square root of x squared plus y squared. So the magnitude is the square root of negative 36 squared. Now I'm not bothering to write negative because I know when I square it the negative is going to go away anyway. Plus negative 0.5 squared. Again I'm not writing the negative because I know when I square it that's going to go away anyway. Square root 36 squared plus 0.5 squared gives me that the magnitude here is basically 36. That's not too surprising because this thing's almost 100% going to the left, just slightly down. So that little bit of down just isn't adding much to the conversation. 36 units, newtons of force. Now the last thing I'm wondering is what is this little tiny angle right here? So the formula for that The angle is the arc tangent of y over x, and if my vector is on the left, quadrant 2 or 3, I need to add 180 degrees. If I look at my picture, my angle is my vector is indeed in quadrant 3, so I'm going to add 180 degrees to that. So my angle is the arc tangent of y, which is negative 0.5, over x, which is negative 36, add 180 degrees. So go into my calculator here, here we go. Arc tangent, negative 0.5, divide negative 36, close the parentheses, add 180, gives me 180.795. Angle is 180.795 degrees. And so we'll round that to 181 degrees. And so there we are. I know the overall effect is a 36 Newton force happening just slightly below directly to the left. Now another place you're going to see problems like this is you're going to see problems like this in stories involving motion of objects. Let's look at the next example. You can read the story while I erase. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture. Key to a story like this is you want to draw a picture. Here's north, here's east, here's south, Here's west. My airplane is going 550 miles per hour, so that's magnitude, 50 degrees west of north. What do they mean by west of north? Of north means start from north and turn to the west. So 50 degrees west of north, I'm going to start at north and turn 50 degrees to the west. So there we go, and I'll just mark that right there. That is 50 degrees west of north. The wind is 4, oh, and, and I'm going 530 miles per hour. 530 miles per hour. Almost forgot that. All right. Now, in a minute, we're going to convert that and find its components. But let me go ahead and finish the picture first. Let's look at the wind now. The wind is blowing 40 miles an hour from 10 degrees south of west. 10 degrees south of west. So I start at west and I turn 10 degrees to the south. So that's like so. But there's a word hidden in that sentence. From. It says the wind is blowing from 10 degrees south of west. If it's blowing from 10 degrees south of west, where is it blowing to? It's blowing to the other direction. Where the wind is coming from is the opposite of where the wind is going to. So the wind is going to 10 degrees north of east. 
and again the magnitude there is 40 miles per hour and this is not quite to scale but that's just going to help me see everything okay so now we can go for our components let's get the wind out of the way first i have 40 miles per hour and a 10 degree angle so my components are going to be 40 miles per hour times the cosine of 10 degrees for the x component and 40 miles per hour times the sine of 10 degrees for the y component and here we go to the calculator 40 cosine 10 40 sine 10 and so from the wind i get the x component is 6.9 Four, six, and the y component. Oh, I wrote that backwards. Look at that. The x component is thirty-nine point three nine two. The y component is six point nine four six. So that's the wind. Now we need to look at the plane itself. So again, magnitude times the cosine of the angle gives me x. So 530 miles per hour times the cosine of what angle am I going to put there? That's right, 140 degrees. Because it's 90 degrees from here to here, and another 50 degrees, that's 140. <clears throat> and then 530 sine of 140 degrees for the Y component. So 530 cosine 140 gives me an x component of negative 406.004 and a y component, 530 sine 140 degrees, 340.667. And so now I'm going to go ahead and add those up to get the overall result. Thirty nine plus point three nine two plus a negative four zero six point zero zero four gives me negative three sixty six point six one two. And now the Y component adding those up, I have six point nine four six add. 340.667 gives me 347.613. So notice my overall result is x is negative, y is positive. So I am going off to the left and up, off to the left and up. And that ought to make a good sense that my overall result is somewhere in here. I'll erase some of the rest of the picture just so I can fit it in. So there is the overall result right there going that way. Okay, now to close this out, I want to know the size or the magnitude of that direction and I want to know its direction angle. So, <clears throat> First, I'm going to go for magnitude. The magnitude of the result is square root of x squared plus y squared. So the magnitude of the result is the square root of 366.612 squared. I didn't worry about the negative because squaring is going to make the negative go away anyway plus 347.613 squared. To the calculator I go, 366.612 squared plus 347.613 squared gives me the overall result is 500 five miles per hour. I went ahead and rounded to the nearest mile per hour. So our overall result is 505 miles per hour.
Now the next thing I want to know is what is the direction angle? So now to find the direction angle, we use the tangent inverse again. So the direction angle is the tangent inverse of y over x. And if I'm in quadrant 2 or 3, I should add 180. I'm in quadrant 2, so I'm going to add 180 degrees. So my angle is the tangent inverse of 347.613 over negative 366.612 plus 180 degrees. To the calculator we go. Arc tangent, negative 366.612 divide 347.613 and add 180 degrees and I get that my direction angle is 133 degrees uh, actually rounds to yes 133 degrees is 133.4 degrees I'm rounding to the nearest whole degree so that means that this angle right here is 133 degrees. Now one last thing, the question asks what is the direction relative to due north? Well let's see, here's due north, so the direction relative to due north would be just this little angle right there. And what is that little angle right there? Well that would be 133 degrees minus 90 degrees would give me 43 degrees. So this wind has pushed our plane off a little bit to the left. Instead of going 50 degrees west of north, it's only going 43 degrees west of north. But since both the direction of the plane and the wind are heading northerly, the plane also got a little bit of a boost in terms of its north speed. So folks, that's how you do word problems involving multiple vectors, even when there's not a graph. And you know what that means. Now it's your turn.